it's gotten a lot easier to edit sketch patterns. I'm going to exit this sketch and then re-enter. And I'm going to go into the relation icon and choose to edit the existing pattern and add another row. But we can also add more geometry to the pattern. Let's add a keyway to this hole. Simply edit the pattern and make a selection. And accept it. And that's it. Now we have an updated sketch pattern. Today we're highlighting Onshape's latest updates to configuration visibility. Let's use this customizable flight case as our example. We only want certain options to appear based on case size. Now when a rule or parameter is collapsed, Onshape shows a clear summary of the visibility condition. No more digging around, figure out what's happening. You can see it in human readable text right here. Let's expand all these inputs and we can collapse the things that we don't want to worry about. Now, let's add a condition for foam inserts based on size. For this list range between 500 and custom, we're going to show what's available now. And by default, the checkbox for showing hidden inputs is on to really make it clear what's going on. Now, Let's add cutouts based on the size of the case. A new option is available here, adding option rules. To add option rules, you can see I have an example right here. Let's clear this out and add some new option rules for the compartments. So between a range from our drop-down list, we have one, two, three, or four apartments that we can choose. But for the smaller size, we want to have one or two cutouts. And for the larger size, we want to have three and four cutouts. And you can see here in the preview, we have only the valid choices. Let's go ahead and set uh, the sizes for the larger cases. Under the options here, I'm going to set discreetly three and four as the choices when the size of the case is in between these list range values, between 700 and the custom size. All right, and you can see that all tests out right here. If I go 700, I have three and four uh, available after size 850. Great. Now, when working in this form, there's a lot of things going on. If you keep adding conditions, you might get lost. Thankfully, there's an undo and redo button at the bottom of the screen here that you can employ. All right. Let's collapse all of our inputs, get a nice final human readable summary of the visibility condition. Once we have that, let's save this and show the results of our parameters. Let's set this to 850. And you can see if I switch this uh, to compartments, we're getting choices three and four available. And if we set the size of the box to a smaller size, we'll get one and two. And of course, if we set it to uh, the even smaller size, we'd get none. With forms and frames profiles libraries, it is now much simpler to find exactly what you're looking for. Simply search for a keyword at the top of the screen and you will be able to easily identify which profile you want in this case. This also works with sheet metal forms. Let's go ahead and search for an emboss. And there we have it. And we can just go ahead and place it automatically. Need to check if two curves truly align? Onshape's Curve Deviation Tool makes it easy. In a part studio, open the Analysis Tools and choose Curve Deviation. Select your first chain of curves, then the second. Onshape instantly shows the minimum and maximum deviation. 
with clear labels at the exact points of difference. You can adjust the label spacing with the scale slider for clarity. If curves share endpoints, the full length is compared. If not, OnShape trims to the best matching region and shows you where alignment breaks down. In an assembly where you want to create an in-context part studio, it is sometimes difficult to get the exact hide show state of all of the components in a complex assembly. But now we can hide and show the instances before setting the initial context. Simply go to the browser and select the components that you want to hide or show, and that's it. You may now drag and drop individual values of a variable table or drag the entire variable table itself within the variable table pane in a part studio or an assembly. You can also collapse and expand all as well. OnShape now lets you mix and match units across your workspace. Use units for inches for length, grams for mass, and cubic centimeters for volume if you wanted to, all in the same design. Setting custom unit defaults that match your workflow, industry, or regional standards is now possible. You now have the capability of mixing and matching units during import and export in your custom material libraries. Here, I have exported my material library in the Google Sheets, made some changes, and bringing it back in using the update function, noticing that you have the full ability to see the unit set and even change them after. With this update, the OnShape Flatten Surface utility, when exporting, now supports the inner edges during the export process. So if I export this as a DXF, you can see clearly I have the inner loops here. Now you may change the value of a sketch dimension relation to a negative value. In the inspection table panel, when you have a drawing with many characteristics, the column header will now stay at the top as you scroll up and down through the list. You may now freely copy and paste individual cell and table data in many ways, internal to an on-shape drawing in this case, or selecting rows and columns for an external application directly. In this case, I'm going to take the sheet metal parts and copy them here to a Google Sheet. Now in list view, you can sort by part number and revision, as well as state. Here I can sort on assemblies very easily and then just sort down to my parts area. Also, when selecting an individual component and opening it, it will now isolate it and hide the other parts. So that way you can tell exactly what you're working on in a multi-part part studio. Now within on-shape tasks, the ability to assign tasks to multiple users in your account exists. Here, let's go ahead and add a comment, save that comment, we'll close that task, complete the action, of course add a comment to ensure that people know what happened, and you can see the completed task has been done by me. In the rare situation where you need to recover an on-shape document, OnShape provides its entire history, which makes it easy to get back to a previous state. In this case, we can choose for an assembly to restore to a previous change from the history to continue to wait. If we choose restore, we're presented with the versions and histories graph where we can add a restore to the point that we wish. In part studios, we also have an additional option to roll back to the top of the feature list and we can roll forward in time until we reach a state that works for us. When you have folders in an assembly here, these folders can be incredibly useful inside of a render studio. Notice that we have a filter here in a, an assembly where we can hide and show things very easily. These folders now appear inside of render studio automatically. You can also filter on folder names, Simply select the folder filter, type the name of the folder. Here and I have a hardware folder. And now I can simply isolate all these screws in the render studio. 
I can also simply suppress an entire folder here as well. If I right click on it, there we go. Quick and easy. The Onshape support mechanism has received some nice updates. You'll notice that the contact support tool has the ability to upload existing attachments. In this case, I'm uploading a material library and an external screenshot. Furthermore, you can take full screen captures with the selected part of your screen. I'm gonna go ahead and hide or redact a certain portion of the screen here. We'll add a note over the top of it here as well. Changing the color. Other tools are still here, like pointing arrows and using the pen to highlight certain areas. You can also add a very detailed description uh, with a large detailed description box that you can fill in to give the exact information you need to support. You can also still share with support and support is aware of these permissions on screen. We hope this makes it easier to provide feedback to the Onshape team.